Good day, one what fly squad. Welcome back to another Thursday trip report. I'm at Amsterdam Airport, and today I'm flying KLM Triple Seven Two Hundred ER from Amsterdam to Chicago. Um, I checked in and got my bags checked through all the way to Chicago from Prague. So all I have to do here is to clear immigration and leave the European uh, Schengen area. So yeah, now without further ado, let's go. If you're interested, you can check out my KLM Prague to Amsterdam trip report via the link in the description down below. At Prague Airport check-in earlier this morning, we were given two middle seats for the flight to Chicago. That's not fun at all, so luckily we found a self-check-in or transfer kiosk to change our seats. Next, we have to go through the passport control to leave the Schengen area. Most travellers here are from Europe or America. We're all eligible for the self-passport check, so the line was actually quite long. But at least it was fast moving. Not long after, we're in the air site in the non-Schengen area. It was very, very busy. Amsterdam Schiphol Airport is one of the worst hit airports due to travel recovery after COVID and staff shortages. We did see the long line for people entering the Schengen area and it didn't look fun for them. I wasn't quite impacted other than not having food for the first flight from Prague. And most importantly, my flights were on time and I got my bags at Chicago. I don't have lounge access today, so it is overpriced airport food and drinks for me. Your attention please. At 11 o'clock you are all welcome to attend a church service in the meditation centre on the second floor in lounge 2. Our flight to Chicago is leaving from gate F4 today. There's a very long line, I don't know why, but we're about to find out. Anyway, here's our aircraft today. It's a 17 year old KLM Boeing 777-200ER Papa Hotel Bravo Cabet Hotel. It's in the newer KLM Asia livery. 11 on destination Chicago. Prior to boarding, you need to fill out an attestation form. You can find it on the table at the beginning of the boarding lane. I don't know if it's because of COVID, but you need to do this attestation form at the boarding gate. I thought it'd be easier for them to give it to us during check-in. Anyway, somehow they were paging for our names, so we went to the counter. They checked our documents and our COVID-19 test result, and then they let us board. We were among the first to board today. Hello, how are you? Fine, yourself? Yeah, yeah fine. Thank so you. Okay, Welcome on board KLM Triple Seven. This is business class, and then here's our good old economy class. First few rows are economy comfort, so economy with extra leg room. My seat today is 17k, a standard economy seat. 17 is a overwing seat, so you don't get much of a view other than your big big Triple Seven wing. I still quite like it regardless. It's been a while since I've been on a Triple Seven 200. Now let's go through the seat features together. So there's a cut hook. A touchscreen TV with a USB port and headphone jack. Underneath you'll find a literature holder and there's an in-flight magazine in it. The tray table is folded in half so you can open it and doubling the size. You can also move it back and forth. Down here you'll find a seat pocket with a safety card and vomit bag. And leg room or sit pitch according to Seat Guru is 31 inches. The seat itself is quite thin, so it feels a bit more than 31 inches. Underneath, between every two seats, you'll find a universal power socket. And lastly, every economy seat has a comfortable, adjustable headrest. On every seat, you'll find a blanket, but there's no pillow. Initially, I actually thought I'd drop the pillow on the floor. I was looking around my seat, but it turns out no one has one. Economy class today is really, really full, but luckily, sitting next to my cousin at the aisle seat is a lifetime platinum member. The flight person is having a conversation with him, and later he upgraded him to economy comfort or maybe even business class, I'm not sure. During the short delay, the cabin crew walked around the cabin to give out individual earphones. I love how so many things, including the earphone, is blue, so it fits well with the KLM branding.
this 8 hour flight to Chicago, you'll be served lunch after takeoff and a light meal before landing. The cabin crew just started the service with a bottle of water, an antiseptic wipe and a hand sanitizing gel. I really appreciate this big bottle of water, I love it when airlines do this. Lunch is being served now and today we have two options, either a chicken curry rice or a vegetarian pasta. My cousin and I both opted for the chicken curry. Along with your main, there's a huge salad with couscous, a bread with cheese, and for drink of choice, I went for OJ. The chicken curry dish is really, really good. My cousin said it's the best airplane food she ever had. The salad was also a highlight for me, very fresh and delicious. In KLM economy class, you were given wooden cutlery. Again, the curry is amazing. I actually did ask the crew if I could have another one. Unfortunately, they ran out of it. For the bread roll, I found it interesting that they give you cheese instead of butter. Very good regardless. Hello there, welcome to KLM 777-200ER Economy Class Lavatory. I'm in the one between the two cabins. So, quite spacious here, it's pretty good. You have a coat hook here. A mirror at the back. Amenity wise, nothing much. You have hand soap. Um, let's see. Toilet paper. Air sickness bag. When I got back to my seat, I realised the meal service isn't over. It's now time for dessert and a hot drink. So, dessert was a custard tart and a cup of tea. I'm loving this flight so far, custard tart is one of my favourite desserts and you can't go wrong with a cup of tea. Also the cabin crew have been amazing, however I don't really catch the European or Dutch humour. They would say something and then laugh by themselves and then there's me fake laughing. In a post-Covid world, KLM is quite good with their in-flight entertainment. You have plenty of movies to choose from on the TV screen. There's Wi-Fi on board and text messages are free but really slow and there's also in-flight magazine. Hey, if you're new to my channel, I'm so glad you made it to this video. I upload a new trip report every Thursday, 12pm Hong Kong time. In the Netherlands, that's every Thursday, 6am. And in Chicago, it's every Wednesday, 11pm. So if you don't want to miss out another weekly trip report, simply click the subscribe and bell button. So when I upload again next week, you'll get notified. You can also follow me or like me on my Be Real, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. A few hours have gone by and now it's time for a meal before landing. This time you don't get an option, but drink is still available for you to choose. And this time I opted for a cup of sparkling water. I'm not too sure about the proper name for this dish, but it's basically a wrap with cheese in it. Taste wise I thought it was okay, but I reckon there was too much dough to cheese ratio. We still got maybe about an hour to go, we're currently flying over Canada. Flying through some really thin clouds at the moment. I'm going to hazard a guess and assume that the ATC in America told our captain that the temperature outside is 70 degrees so he has no clue what Celsius that is and he was forced to tell us the Fahrenheit. Anyway, we started our descent into Chicago O'Hare so let's quickly conclude this trip port with KLM right here right now. Our journey today started at Prague Airport but I'm just going to cover the Amsterdam to Chicago leg for the sake of conclusion. I liked how after landing into Schiphol Airport there were self-check-in or transfer 
kiosk everywhere so I was able to change my seat from a middle to a window. Overall I really enjoyed my rather long transit at Amsterdam airport, it really was designed to be a transit airport. It isn't as glamorous as Singapore Changi but it does its job. At the boarding gate we had to fill in a attestation form and then I saw my name on the TV so the staff wanted to check our documents basically because we were transit guests I think and after that we were allowed to board right away. When I sat down at 17k I really appreciated the rather good leg room, headrest and blanket but disappointingly there was no pillow. Later we were hit by a very short delay by like maybe 10 minutes and I appreciated how the captain informed us about it. The first meal was really really good, it was either a vegetarian pasta or chicken curry rice, we opted for the curry, it was really really good again. The salad was also very delicious coming from a person who doesn't like veggie. Our cabin crew today were lovely, they look a bit scary sometimes but they're actually so funny and they make witty jokes with you. The prior landing meal was okay portion wise, it was the wrap with cheese but I didn't like it too much. Overall, it was a really enjoyable flight to Chicago. Now for your information, between Amsterdam and Chicago there are two daily flights. One is operated by KLM and another one is operated by United. If you were to book KLM return in economy class, you're looking to pay around 620 euros and it's cheaper if you book through Delta cold share. So guys, thank you so much again for watching today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this, my first ever KLM long haul trip report. Again, if you're new to my channel, I upload a new trip report like this one every Thursday, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Go ahead and click the subscribe and bell buttons. Don't be shy. If you don't mind, please also like this video, comment down below, and share this video with your friends. Each and every of your action can help the growth of my channel. I'm available on Snapchat, Be Real, Instagram and Facebook. If you want to make direct impact into funding my flights, I'm available on PayPal and Patreon. PayPal is a one-off payment, you can do it anytime you want. And Patreon is a monthly or annual league subscription. Thank you for your continuous support. After landing, I'll do a Chicago vlog, so stay tuned for that. Now please enjoy the approach and landing into Chicago O'Hare. that looks like it could be in Venice, Venice, Italy, or Paris, France. It was most likely constructed in that early part of the 1920s before we had yet to develop our own uniquely American style of architecture. And so we'll be seeing a little bit more of that evolution of architecture as we continue on our way. But as we head under the bridge, we're going to get a nice view of Trump International Hotel and Towers. This is a... 
This is, in fact, the second tallest building here in Chicago. It was constructed in 2009 in the style of contextualism. Our Greenwich Media user is now heading down the South Branch. So that gives us a better idea of where we've been traveling along the river. U.S. City, you're putting your trash on the front street. Here in Chicago, all our trash goes in the back alleyways, keeping our city beautiful and clean. We have time in the spring to let the sailboats parade out onto Lake Michigan. We have time about that green building with the boat leaping on top, which is called North in the Steakhouse. Ever have an eye on this building? That yeah, looks like an old school champagne bottle, right? Well, that's because it was created during the Prohibition in protest. Left is our flagship Apple store. That's a building with a semi-structural glass holding up that rather thin and narrow roof. That roof is, in fact, designed... A lot of people don't know this table. Just here's up. Here are a lot of people. For me, Can someone explain to me what the hell is infant water? And if I weren't flying tomorrow to Boston, I would have bought this chai latte. My cousin is forcing me to go to gym with her. Next morning I'm having breakfast at the Sheraton Hotel Lounge. You can check out a hotel video on that which will come out very soon, so stay tuned. Now my friend is driving us to the McDonald's headquarters here in Chicago. We thought the menu here is going to be so extensive but really they only had 4 or 5 things that aren't specifically American so we were a bit let down. So we decided to go somewhere else for lunch instead. This is my first time having bone marrow, it's amazing. Next stop in Chicago is the Museum of Science and Industry. I'm not really a museum guy, but this one is pretty cool. I'm so old, I could say that I flew on an airplane in a museum. Yeah. This, by the way, was a real aircraft. My friend Mike actually flew on this exact plane before. God, look at the leg room. <laughs> That's what I do in the videos. <laughs> There's no cock. <laughs> oh, it's got a headrest, adjustable. Oh, there we go. Mm. We're now on the top of the Willis Tower and the view is spectacular. I wish the weather was a bit better. Oh my god, so, they use like the Ukraine colours for that. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.
on another Thursday trip. Oh, bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned off.